Right, morning everyone. Sorry, a bit croaky. Hay fever and it's getting to me a bit. Um, today is, uh, I don't know what the date is. End of June? End of June. Um, it's race four, I think. <laughs> or is it race five? I don't know. It's one of the races in the Medway Yacht Club single-handed race series. And uh, it is a perfect day for a sail. It's sunny, it's warm. We've got a good breeze. For us, well, yeah, pretty much coming out of the east, which is what's forecast, which means we'll have a nice long beat down river. Consequently, uh, the guys that organise it have sent a very sensible course, which is Stangate Spit to Port. Finish. No messing around with lots of marks. When you're on your own, that's a bit of a pain. But because of the nature of our river and then the direction the wind is in, we're going to have a good beat, a little bit of reaching and fetching up between the little bits, a good run with a bit of reaching and whatever. Um, should be a good day. The wind is set to build, so um, at the moment it's kind of 12, 14 knots sitting here on the mooring. It's going to get stronger as we get down there, which is kind of, if I was cruising I'd be reefing. As I'm racing it's the top end of what I want to, uh, to sail single-handed with really. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, uh, coming back, we're, we're going to push the tide the whole way out there, and coming back the tide will be at full flood. Full, full flood, is that the right word? Um, so uh, the apparent should be less, so I think should be still okay for the spinnaker as long as the reaches aren't too tight. We're not really going to know until we get down here. Where we are sitting here in our little bit of the river with the trees either side and the buildings, you never really get a true sense of the wind. So uh, we'll see. Anyway, I've got half an hour to the start. I better get, get a wriggle on. So those of you that have watched the last single-handed race will know that not all my starts go quite to plan. Well this week was another one of those slightly risky plans, but it seemed like the best thing to do at the time. So, the wind was blowing pretty much straight down the river. There was a very slight bias to being on port, but you also wanted to be on the right-hand side of the river. So starting on starboard was a natural thing to do over on the right-hand side of the river, with the freedom then, if you made the perfect start, to tack onto port when you wanted to. Except that when you're on a narrow river in a fleet, only the person that wins a start really has control. And even then, they might have to tack because someone else is calling for space. So I decided I'd line up on port. If everyone else made a bad start and I could cross the fleet, great. But I wasn't really expecting that. What I was really planning on doing was ducking everyone, sailing over to the favoured side of the river, the right hand side, tacking on port over there and hoping that my longer leg on the favoured side of the river might stand me in good stead when we get to the first crossing. So the first part of the plan worked out okay. I did have a little bit of a faff with the main sheet, but as I was on the favoured tack, I didn't really lose any ground on the fleet and still had to duck them. Bit of a complication when it came to Archie, or at least it could have been, but that turned out okay as well. So let's see what happens when we get to the first cross. I'm going to show the first few minutes of this race unedited, or at least without any bits cut out. That way you'll get an idea of how often we have to tack, just how small our river seems in a cruising yacht when you're going upwind at low water with more boats all around you. Okay, so it worked a bit better this time. Duck the fleet so I could get to the right position on starboard where there's better wind, and now I'm getting across in front of them, so that's good. It does count on everyone being on the line on time. And Archie was just a little bit late just to complicate things a bit, but uh, 
fortunately the wind was building for me and uh, let me get across in front of him. The trouble is, what's going to happen is everyone who goes to the right is going to have the advantage. So I imagine I might have a problem in a minute with the dealer and shifter and well all of them to be frank. But can I sell what you got? So I've got a duck day luck, I'll have to duck shifter. So as expected, the right hand side of the course was indeed very slightly favoured. Anyone who went there got the advantage over anyone who'd gone to the other side. But of course, you can't go up a river on just one side only. And my starting strategy really came into its own now, because although I was having to keep ducking and chopping and changing with the leaders, I was out of phase, I wasn't having to sail in their dirty wind. With them being much bigger boats, if I'd followed the same strategy and was going in basically the same direction, I'd have probably ended up going slowly further and further back. This way, I could stay with them. Not sure if this was the right thing to do or not, but I couldn't stop myself from pinching a bit when I got to this side of the course to try and make it last a bit longer especially as we were getting closer to the corner where we would turn right and therefore free off a bit. One big advantage with the wind coming from the east and an incoming tide is that it was wind with tide and therefore flat water. So I could do these long lazy tacks, not using very much rudder and slowing up the speed at which I went through the wind so I'd have more time to sort out the sails. A big advantage when you're on your own. One lesson I don't seem to have learnt from racing these boats is that bigger, faster boats are bigger and faster. We got to the point where we had to make that last tack onto port. The big daler and reefer had already done so and were coming across, and I was in front. And because it's a race, and as much as Aaron wouldn't thank me for it, I thought I'd tack on top of him, giving my dirty wind. Except, of course, my tack wasn't perfect, and reefer, as I may have already mentioned, is a bigger, faster boat. So she managed to sail out underneath me. It had proved to affect me a little bit, but not too much. But if I'd gone just a couple of boat lengths further, I wouldn't have frustrated Aaron, and I would have had clearer wind myself. It's going to favour the bigger, faster boats and seahorses coming in between. So we've got Red Reef for the one that won the last race behind, Papillion behind, obviously, and then there's Why Not, a little splinter. And then in front of me, we've got White Reefer, Reefer X, and uh, the big Dana. It's got three on it this time, so they're nearly qualified. Um, pretty gusty, fluky wind. We've had down to like six, seven knots at some point. I've no idea what wind we've got now, but White Reefer looked like we've got a puff, so um, there to be plenty of racing in this, even though there's only one mark on the course. But it's a reasonable beat, I mean, I don't know what it is, but it's got to be eight miles, perhaps, or something. The beat, back again, maybe not that far, but it's still, it's long enough. Okay, so I'm cutting a bit out now, or well, this film will go on forever. We've now gone down this short fetch to the point where I call mirrors, and arguably the first tactical decision of the race. Did you cut across the tide, try and get out of it, and then have the dirty wind around mirrors, or did you plug the tide, but keep in clearer wind?
Not sure we can really draw any conclusions from what we got in this race, but the general consensus seemed to be the bigger and faster your boat, the more you were prepared to plug the tide, and the smaller and slower the boat you were, the more you were prepared to take the dirty wind just to get out of the tide. So we've just clear, cleared the point we call Mears, and, uh, or I call Mears anyway, and um, I'm stuck in the dirty wind of the Daler again. But I am still with them, which is good. Red Reefer is kind of broken free of the, uh, the slower boats and is probably catching me up to the tree. Those of you that watch our races will know that there's a lot of mud on the east coast but you know that's not all bad because when the tide's coming in like this and you want to try and get out of it you can push your luck with mud knowing that a you won't break the boat if you hit the ground and b if the absolute worst happens and you get stuck with an incoming tide you're just going to float off again so consequently we all hugged the piece of land we call who island to try and keep out of it white reefer i'm hanging on to the big dangler has gone out in front starting to stretch its legs. It's just that little bit easier when it's the crawl on board. I know this wind is meant to build, um, but I hope it stays like this, because this is just about perfect. It's warm, it's sunny, it's a good easterly wind. It's shifting around a bit, but it's, and the, there is some gusts, but they're not vicious. You know, you can work it, and none of them are that hard. Um, the boat is just properly powered up in the puffs without having to fight it. It's just, just fantastic. And I'm having a good race. Next tactical decision then, we cleared Who Island and we're going down between the forts. Do you plug the tide, keep clear air, or do you go right over to the Darnet Island side to get some tidal relief but put up with the bad wind that goes around that fort? Well this time, I think there was a clear answer. Because although I had to put up with all the bad wind, there's a sort of a back eddy that runs around Darnet Island. It gives you a little shove rather than holding your back, and it made all the difference. So coming down between the forts, I stayed close to um, Darnick Fort. The big daler kind of went, and, and White Reefer, which is sort of behind the jib at the moment, went down the middle. And uh, Red Reefer kind of hugged the Folly Fort side of the river. Um, I think I've come out of that best. I feel like I've caught these two up again a bit. White Reefer got in front of the daler. Um, there weren't really many tacks for a little while there, and he's managed to stretch his legs. Although. Um, He's having obviously a bit of fun at the moment. Um, Red Reefer is behind the flapping flag there. Um, I can't see why not now, although why not like um, Papillion, the little Challenger 16, is going to struggle a bit more in this uh, heavier breeze. But they've got a very generous handicap, so um, probably won't be too bad. can't help it because he's going into the mud block out, block out. so he's going to have to tack actually I'm going to moan because he's going to tack and give me a lot of dirty air he might have gone just far enough 
Oh, concentrating. He might have just gone just far enough that it won't affect me too much. Sorry for the poor camera work. I'm actually worrying about where I'm going as well. Right over to the what is the entrance to what is it Alterum Creek, I think. Is that Alterum Creek? I think it is. Because we're trying to keep out the tide. The big boats are getting away from her a bit because there's no tacking and such going on, but um, I'm hanging in here. Actually, I've got to concentrate, I've only got two metres of water now, so. Uh, but um, we're hanging in, we're trying to keep out the tide, get around this corner where it always dips around. Then we'll have the last kind of beat bit, if you like, up to um, the Stangate Spit Boy, and then it'll be uh, all change going. Spinnaker up and see what happens. Probably our final tack to the mark, as long as there's not a big shift, which is Stangate Spit, which is kind of up there, um, to port. I've just got a spinnaker ready. I didn't have it ready earlier because um, we were properly heeled over and I didn't want it getting washed off. Having your spinnaker washed out of your boat when you're single-handed on a tight river estuary with low water doesn't bear thinking about. So um, anyway, it's ready to go now. So. Uh, um, well away from uh, Red Reefer, hanging on to White Reefer just in front. The big daler is, uh, can you see that? It's kind of there. Um, I'm in the race and it is fantastic. I have uh, just paid the price for not being prepared, one of which was to have a good drink. It's been a long beat and um, I'm clearly dehydrated because I went, went to let the jib down and let the spinnaker down instead, which is never a good move in the race. Anyway, I'll have a drink. So it's all hard work. We have got 16 knots of true wind at the moment, which granted with the apparent is now down to like 10, but um, it's still enough to punish me when I do something silly like that. As it happens, because it collapsed, I managed to pull it up again quite quick, but uh, I don't want to be doing that too many times. Anyway, got to sail the boat. I've got a drive coming up now, so I need to think. Thank you. 
find this jibe. Didn't get the sheet set correctly again really. Steered too far. All things considered a bit of a mess. But um, I'm doing all right. Reefer's got away from us a bit now. There's Reefer down there. It is a big kite on a fast boat. So um, I did well hang on to it upwind to be honest, but I'm going to say goodbye downwind I think. The Dayla, I guess because they're not used to sailing it so short-handed, isn't flying its spinnaker. So I'm actually starting to come into them. Can't see any of the others. Saw why not obviously on the corner. Um, I didn't see Red Reefer and I haven't seen um, I haven't seen the little 16 foot micro thingy um, Papillon so um, I have no idea how we're doing in the race um, uh, but it doesn't matter actually I'm having a good sail and I'm having a good race with the boats I'm with so um, it's good for some reason there's not many of, as many of us out today which is strange because it's such a perfect day um, but um, they're missing a good sail Okay, I've got another decision now. Um, White Reefer looks like it's hanging on to port and trying to get down the river out of jive. I'm thinking I'm going to go out into the river, jive to get them more tide and get a favoured angle on starboard. Um, especially as soon as my last job was so terrible, I clearly need some practice. Pardon me. Still can't see the others. Creeping along though, with this tide, we're doing nearly seven knots over the ground, so um, six knots through the water. That's kind of as fast as I go really, unless there's waves or particularly strong winds. Um, it's actually only 12 knots of wind at the moment, so it's actually quite relaxing now. That was pretty diabolical as well, wasn't it? Not quite sure what I did wrong there. I tried driving the boom for the mainsail first. I think I just wasn't right on the right angle of wind. I'm going to put it down to the sun and be dehydration. It's a bit of a lame excuse. Feel free to comment down below if you want to tell me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> you might see better from the cameras what's going on, but I, was, you know, I don't know. Anyway, no one died. No one got wet. I'm still in the race, still upright. Nothing broken. It's almost perfect, really. Okay, that was better. See what a drink of water does. To be honest, what well, it was really was just doing all the things I know I should be doing anyway, but just doing them. Did find it easier in that instance. If you've seen my video on driving the spinnaker, I used to drive the spinnaker first. I think I'm deciding at the moment anyway in this breeze. It's easier to jive the main first, get on a run, then go through the jive by like five, 10 degrees. So it's just a little bit on the other side and jive the main at the same time, because then as, as you're dead downwind, the spinnaker, the, the main tool's kind of in the middle of the boat and keeps the spinnaker flying. And then I drive the spinnaker. But yeah, next week I'll change mine again. That's what I did that time anyway. This, um, you see the big data? He said he'd try and keep out of our way because he's not really in the race. He's not doing a very good job of that. He's come down, as I got past him, he ducked in behind me, goose winged. Took my wind, although to be fair, it didn't affect me that much, but um, it's the principle. Anyway, I'm still in the race. White Reef is still in sight. No one else is, so, oh. I need to concentrate.
So, just going past Wilsonians in this little bit we call Heartbreak Reach, which if you've watched these films before, you'll know um, generally or often a lot happens. But in this race, not a lot is going to happen. Um, other than I've got a tug right beside me, which is uh, kind of distracting me somewhat. Um, but White Reefer tore ahead, big spinning curve, but not that far. I think I might still have a chance against them, although it's going to be closer now. Um, the Dana, which of course isn't really in the race, is now dropped well off. Um, you did need a spinnaker in this wind. Um, and I can't see anyone else, literally can't see anyone else. But So I've probably beaten Red Reefer, because um, he's not that much slower. But the, the little Why Not, the little Splinter, and Papillon, the little um, Challenger, um, who knows. But it has been a cracking day on the water. Um, it has, just, it has just been the perfect day for a sail. It's 25 degrees, it's sunny, barely a cloud. Um, we've had a, not that steady a breeze, but it hasn't been that bad. Just at the top end of peach, well, top end of peachy. It wasn't a struggle, it was just peachy. Um, and I'm, it's been fantastic. So um, there's only one more of these races left, so uh, all to play for, because of course I had to miss one of them to do the Wayfarer Nationals. So um, I imagine it's, um, if, I don't suppose, anyway, who knows? I don't suppose Pelion did so well in this race and he was running away with it, so that might let the rest of us catch up a bit. So it could be all to play for in the last race. We'll see. Anyway, I better concentrate. I haven't got far to go, but I might as well look it, make it look good. And that's about it. Once they'd worked the handicaps out, I found out I had actually won, which was great. And as I said, that leaves things wide open for the final race of the year because each of the first four races have been won by someone different. So let's hope the last race is as much fun as this one was. more than that but I managed to pull some of it off before the start and I thought the last bit that about to wash off and even in all that it's still hanging on 